You are now listening to the sounds of the microphone. That's amazing you would say that because how it worked. I heard about the project come together and soon be in his apartment. That's where it was happening. He had a four track. And I heard some of the songs people were doing already. So I already knew the level. And I had ideas and I came with an arm full of records and Jay Sumbi, he's a DJ too and a producer and he was so dope. He laced up everything the way I liked it and added some his flavor. And then he finished it. He'd be like, okay, let me finish it. And he finished it. I was like, oh, I love how you blended it. I have my lyrics and you're young, you're hungry. I didn't know that I was compiling full songs because I have to admit some of the songs were different pages I was just trying to flex and keep a semblance of what a song subject was about. And then I listened through the years, decades later, I'm like, wow, it, it had cohesion. The energy was such that he wanted each person to go, if I can recall, by themselves so he could just have focus. Because a lot of times back then, it'd be people there, smoke weed, this, that. Mm -hmm. But then once I showed up with my two songs, because everybody was doing two songs for the most part, um, uh, uh, AC did, uh, uh, you know, Happy birthday to me in fantasy. Uh, Juke did, I think, one of his first recordings, which was, um, you know, the song he did during dun, 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 and Peace did two songs. And uh, I did my two, which was Five O'Clock Follies and and Seven Seal. And I realized now through the years, I stretched out on both of those those tunes, you dig? And so what was interesting, when you talk about the energy, I'll mention that first. Once we had most of our songs, we did skits like off the ledge. And that's when everyone was in the room, even people that weren't like having songs on the project, Akili or, or even my ex-girlfriend at the time, uh, Lorez, she said psych or something. But we were able to do group things at that point because the group was starting to consolidate even before it became a full group. Again, it was a compilation. Freestyle Fellowship, it went on with a tangent. So I remember one time everyone was there and we were like, off the ledge, off the ledge. And then we we wrote uh, Tolerate. And I said, why don't we do it on a different time signature? Like flip Run DMC shit, but just make it like on three or six, eight beat, something different. So the first version of Tolerate, which is me and the fellowship members rapping in unison at the same time with a political statement and chopping at the same time, which was dope. So that was kind of energy, the camaraderie of us young going for it as independence because some of us would send a demo or two to a major or not, but they weren't hearing it. And I don't know if it was Sonics or just the way we wrapped our style, but we were like, fuck that shit. And then I had already had a single deal with Arista and stuff. And I had already dealt with producers that wanted to kind of soft wash my approach, you know, which was kind of cool. Cause I opened up to my singing and other things, but I wasn't really getting my lyrical nut off until I started fucking with Good Life and we did the Freestyle Fellowship shit. Because that, um, I had recorded with MC Aces and my bro Pun, you know, rapping in headphones or beating on walls or mm -hmm. did a couple records too. Um, I did something for Jesse Jackson when he ran for president back in the 80s, but stuff that was always in conglomeration with other MCs and, and, you know, a lot of constraints. That was the first time I ever put out something that I know was what I wanted to sample what I wanted to rap on and do. And even to this day, when I listen to it, when I get to the end of Five O'Clock Follies, I'm like, whoa, you were whistling and matching your whistle flow and, you know, harmonic and chopping and destroying it like in 89, because I recorded almost 89, 90, and it came out once they compiled it in late 1991. And who cares? You know, people always want to date shit, date and put the, the little extra two on the 10. Nah, it is factually. I remember when I did that, I did a remix for the Wailers uh, called A Friend. I did um, the Carmen Carter song of Arista. So, you know, it was a little baby wave. But the energy at that apartment with Sumi was incredible. And the beauty was this. We're working on it, right? He's working on a four track. Now, I hear a four track and eight track cassette tapes and that technology because a lot of great punk, or well, God is grace, a lot of good punk rock records were recorded mm. on four track. So, when we were in the process of bouncing tracks on the Ford track, he put the quarter inch halfway in accidentally in the Ford track and it created a MIDI feedback buzz. Not even MIDI, but like a feedback. Mm -hmm. And all it played was the motherfucking bass, but it was subbing. <laughs> so we're not in no big ass studio, no SSL, no need boards, no flying faders, no automation. 
But all of a sudden, we're hearing this motherfucking feedback. And he's like, I, I, I push it all the way in, you know, because I'm helping him with the buttons. I'm like, no, nah, hold on. Sumi decided to use that feedback and figured out a way to make that a track. <laughs> so out of all the underground hip hop tapes that were happening at that moment, we were the only ones that had the super sub bass mm -hmm. and panned it a little bit. Man, I'm trying to tell you that made the difference in our tape. He went back and remixed everything and pulled out that quarter inch on the last track of that four track so you could just get that bass filtered it, get that bass feedback for the low end. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's why when you hear Sumi shit, it definitely bumped. Legal Alien, all that shit with his mock New York accent. Man. Damn, that, the, just the little secret touches like that right there. We was East Coast, West Coast, and we was like the, what they thought, gangster rap and dance rap or, or, or player rap. We are like, no, we have you know avant-garde rap artists out here too. Yeah.